half-tube channels, Simyasi calls them, which she says, remarkably, no one understands them today. And what they are, there are tubes below the ground that carried electrical current somehow to provide to the, uh, you know, the people of the times, and that was built by these beings from the Andromeda constellation. After about 20 years, though, apparently, they somehow were stricken with the same sort of illness they believed that the earlier Vera Kokoha followers were, and they also fled. They're not sure about the illness, but it's kind of unusual in that area that uh, both these ET groups you know, would come down with some sort of illness which would force them to leave. Okay, there was a splinter group of the Hyperboreans. We talked about the Hyperboreans once before who lived in the Greenland area. And uh, the, um, these were giants. They colonized all of the different continents of the planet. Because Billy had a question about Greek mythology, the, the large people, the Cyclops, the Titans, and some of the dwarfs like Hercules. I mean, uh, dwarfs like Hercules, but dwarfs and Titans like Hercules. And she said, yes, these were primarily people, descendants of the Hyperboreans. And then quite a few of them were very large. Hercules was three meters tall. A meter now is roughly just a little bit more than three feet. It's like three feet and an inch. So when you, you can round all these meters off, just multiply them by three, and that would give you a rough idea of the footage. Hercules then was not about nine feet tall. Noah was about uh, three meters ten high. So he would be probably around 11 feet tall, something like that. Adam, when he was created by Semyasa, the, uh, the science leader, he was about almost 5 meters tall. So he was somewhere around 14, 15 feet tall. Gilgamesha, the Sumerian god, was very tall, 7.5 meters. So we're looking at over 20 feet tall here. The giants of the yesteryear, though, they, after staying on Earth for a while and, and breeding, uh, they slowly degenerated themselves down in size. So even though many of these great tall titans had bred themselves in with the earth people, that the earth genetic uh, slowly degenerated uh, the size of the people as well the planet itself. Because the atmospheric pressure on a planet and the sun have a lot to do with the size that you're going to grow here. Uh, because that affects, of course, the, the pull on the bones and so forth, how strong your bones can build and how big you can be. So after a period of time, even these giants of yesteryear, their offspring degenerated down just to being the size that was in accordance with the size of the planet. There was a question about a person's name. Uh, like Billy wanted to know, um, you know, if a person's name, uh, how it is chosen and is it important. And she said, yes, it is, that a person's name should reflect several things. One, his knowledge and his abilities, as well his level of evolution. If not, if a person is bearing a name that is not right for them, it can cause confusion in their life. Interesting idea, huh? As an observant, she pointed out that uh, one of the people in Billy's group, uh, Jacobus, uh, whose name is Jacob, she says, uh, here's a man with a particular problem because that's the wrong name for him. Because of that, it creates confusion. He overburdens him himself with thoughts on dangerous ideas which are not normally characteristic for him, and they give trace of that to the name. She says, for instance, uh, Edward means preserver of the treasure in the old language. By the way, this old language they refer to is the language they figured out that within all spirit forms of the universe, this symbol language that Billy uses all the time, it's a very accurate language where the symbols actually portray the true meaning of what things mean to the spirit. You know, we have words like uh, tree, car, milk, run, and, you know, this language that we've made up called English. But the sound of these words, these phrases and the sounds, uh, are different to the spirit. The spirit doesn't hear them very accurately. And quite often there can be some confusion between the sounds that you make and the way that the spirit actually interprets them. So the ancient Lyrians had figured out uh, the actual sounds of words and what they really mean to your spiritual self. And I have a book, by the way, of names that uh, Billy gave me. There's thousands of names in there with the sounds, how you say the words, and what the meaning actually means to your spirit. So when she's saying Edward means preserver of the treasure, that's what she's referring to. When you say the sounds, Ed, word, the sound of that phrase uh, to your spirit means preserver of the treasure. And that was the basis for this old Lyrian language that she's talking about. Uh, Simyasi, her name means semi-ishwish. 
And Ishwish, to reiterate, means king of wisdom or god of all knowledge. And she's halfway through the studies or halfway through the evolution of becoming an Ishwish, so, so she's a semi-Ishwish. And semi in their language is E-L-O, so Elo. And a female Ishwish is called an Ishrish, I-S-H-R-I-S-H. So in effect, Simyasi is an Elo Ishrish, is how they would pronounce it in her language. So her, her name really isn't Simyasi. This is a, a name that she's using for these contacts. And, but on her world, she would be referred to as, referred to as Elo Ishrish. Uh, when you uh, hear people channeling all the time and claiming to be uh, uh, channeling Pleiadians and so forth, and you wish to challenge them a little bit to find out if they're really in touch with Pleiadians, you could find out if they know this. If they know anything at all about Pleiadian worlds, then they would understand this concept of language, and they would understand then uh, exactly what these people, what their real names are, and how because they don't call each other like Simyasi and Pata on their planet. They refer to them by their level of uh, knowledge, education, and spiritual evolution. Um, another question was about the size of our galaxy that we're in. Billy was curious because astronomers say that our galaxy, the Milky Way, the spiral galaxy that we live in, they estimate that it's about 30,000 light years to the center of our galaxy. Semyasi commented that uh, not exactly right, that our instruments are not that accurate yet that uh, actually to the center of the galaxy of the Milky Way, as measured from uh, our Sol system, from our Sun, would be 53,000 light years. Now we're out kind of on the edge of the suburbs here of our galaxy, but if it's 53,000 light years to the center of our galaxy, that's at least 116,000 light years across, plus we're not clear at the edge. So the Milky Way galaxy could easily be in excess of 125,000 light years across it. If you're not into mathematics, and if that doesn't mean anything to you, uh, imagine it like this. Uh, a light year is expressed, it's the basic theory, theoretical idea of the distance that light will travel in one year. Say, for instance, you went out on a starry night with your flashlight, and you hit the button and flicked your flashlight on. A light immediately leaves your flashlight, doesn't it? It would circle around the planet, if it could you know, go in that direction, for instance, seven times in one second, because light travels at 186,000 miles in one second. Now, we're used to thinking of things in terms of miles per hour. Okay, if you get in your car and go down the freeway, it's 55 miles in one hour you may be driving. Well, here, light's going 186,000 miles, seven times around the Earth, in one second. Now, here's what a light year is. If light travels at 186,000 miles in one second, it takes 60 seconds to make a minute, doesn't it? So multiply 60 times 186,000, and that's how far light will go in one minute. Well, now it takes, uh, what, 60 minutes to make an hour, so it takes 60 times that number, and that's how far light will travel in one hour, okay? That's only one hour. Now there's 24 hours in a day. So multiply that number times 24, and you've got how far light will travel in a day. Well, that's just one day. Now multiply that number times 365, because we have 365 days in a year. Now you've got a huge number, and that's how far light will travel in one year. Consequently, that is a light year. Now they're telling us that it's 53,000 times that, uh, 53,000 of these light years to get to the center of our galaxy. So we have a, just a fantastically huge number here. So living on our little planet with our primitive devices, our cars and our airplanes, uh, distance relative to the size of the galaxy is way off. <laughs> we have no concept. And that's just inside of